This is Dr. John Whitkin doing news and nutrition for this week. Uh, the trouble with iron part three, diabetes. Now, since time began, I have been told that iron builds up your blood and it must be good for you. And in fact, when we're young people, we are worried about iron. Iron deficiency is a huge problem all over the world. Knowing what your iron is an important thing. No doubt about it. Iron is a critical element. It's a critical element though, because it's one of the few that has a tight enough bond to transport oxygen. And oxygen is terribly important and terribly dangerous. So our body uses iron to tightly bind it and transport it. Okay, so it's important. But what happens when you get too much iron? Well, in this case, the story starts back in the 19th century when early physicians noticed that folks with too much iron got what they called bronze diabetes. If you have a disease called thalassemia, where you have a dysfunctional hemoglobin gene, or if you have another disease called hemochromatosis, where your body just has all way too much iron, absorbs way too much in your gut, both of those folks get diabetes at a much higher rate, and their skin gets gradually bronze. So they call it bronze diabetes. Okay, that's how science was in the 19th century. Let's fast forward to today. In the journal Cell Metabolism, there's a wonderful review article that you can Google and look up about diabetes and iron. And what you'll read in that article is lots of information about how uh, iron correlates with diabetes. In fact, the higher your iron level, the worse your diabetes. And how does it happen? Well, the mechanism of it isn't completely sure. But we think that part of what it is, is that iron accumulates in the islet cells of your pancreas gland and damages them. Okay, but it also does many other things. In fact, every aspect of energy metabolism has iron as part of it, and it's dysfunctional. It disrupts insulin sensitivity. It, causes, it makes things called advanced glycation end products more volatile or more sensitive, or lipooxygen uh, effects from li lipid being oxidized, lipids being oxidized. Uh, all of these are part of a nuanced uh, global response to iron throughout your whole body. That's kind of interesting, but it leads us to a conjecture that I want you to think about, and that conjecture is as follows. What would happen if maybe, we've been telling people for the last 10 years, stay away from carbohydrates because they make you get fat and they turn on insulin. Is that the truth? Or is it the iron in all of our carbohydrates? If you look at all of our wheat products in the United States have add iron added to them. Look at your breakfast cereal. You'll find that uh, supposedly breakfast cereals full of nutrition have fortified and they have iron. Could it be that as women become menopausal, they stop losing iron through their periods? Suddenly their iron level shoots up and the average woman going through menopause gains 20 pounds. And how many women do you know who've gone through menopause and say they can't lose weight for the life of them? If we put them on a ketogenic diet and they eat a lot of red meat, do they lose weight? Not always. When you think that through, you realize that iron might be the alternative hypothesis. Hypothesis. I'm fascinated by that because it also explains another phenomenon I've not been able to understand. And that is why does steak make you put out so much insulin and get a high glucose, a high insulin response? It's got loaded with heme. That juicy red steak is loaded with heme, the red color of iron. What will work for me? Well, I'm in the stage right now of going through all my food I eat and looking at the labels to see where iron is coming from. I've swapped out my ibuprofen pills that were red and I've now got uh, blue ones, which you can find. I haven't been able to find iron available. I haven't been able to find iron free flour. Uh, so I'm looking for that. In the meantime, my ferritin level is 140 and I'm aiming for a ferritin level of 40. I'm going to have to give some blood away. And I stopped taking a daily vitamin C until I figured this out. Because did you know that vitamin C increases the absorption iron 400%? Okay, until I figure this out, I'm holding off on the vitamin C. I know vitamin C is a wonderful antioxidant. I want to get back to it. 
but I'm a little bit conflicted right now. So this is Dr. John Whitcomb finishing up News and Nutrition for this week on The Trouble with Iron, Part 3, Diabetes.